I'm going to try and bring, bring this all together. together. Uh, it's very difficult. We started the Aragon Violence Movement four years ago. After we had the shooting in Dan in the Eden Center, we said enough is enough. What are we going to do about it? We brought some community groups together. And uh, we said, you know, what do we need to do? What's wrong? So uh, I said, what's the ultimate objective? And uh, I said, zero, gun violence. And people looked at me as though I was crazy. Because they said that uh, we can't have zero gun violence in the city of Toronto. So why are you going out there talking about zero gun violence? But I said that we already have zero gun violence in the city of Toronto. But we won't have it in certain communities for certain people. So don't tell me it's impossible. And that's when everybody, everybody took a step, step back, back and said, back and said well, maybe he's onto something. something. Uh, uh, we already, we already have, have zero gun violence, violence in the city of Toronto. Toronto. But it's only in certain communities. There's a difference between living in Rosedale and living in Rexdale. In Rosedale, everybody has great aspirations, great longevity, great expectations, great expectations, great job. Everything is nice. They open the fridge door and there's multiple food choices there. They wake up in the morning, there's multiple clothes choices. Right? They go to school, there's multiple class choices. Everything is cool, everything is fine. But the kid, the kid that wakes up in Rexdale is a total, a total opposite. opposite. It, might it might only be, be a leftover a slice, slice of cold, cold pizza, pizza in the fridge. In the fridge. And they have to and eat they have that before, before, they before they go. They, go. they might they only have, have one choice of clothes. They, they might not have slept that night, night because the violence in the house or the drugs in the house was ongoing. And then that kid has to go to school and learn. Violence is normalized in these kids' lives. We work, we work across, across the city of Toronto, Toronto. We, see we see the good, good. we see the bad, bad. and we see and the ugly on, the ground. on a regular basis. I normally walk around, around with a deck of cards, card. because in the deck of cards, cards there's 52, 52 playing cards. cards. And that, that represents, represents the 52, 52 lives that we lost to gun violence in 2005. I asked the I question, how many of those lives could we have saved by doing the right thing as a city, as a caring society? A lot of money, lot of money came, came into, into programming, programming resources, resources, supports, and so on. And, so on. and by, by 2013, that number had been reduced from 52 to 22. In 2013, only 22 people lost their life because people were doing the right things. However, something has changed. Between 2013 and 2016, we've seen a dramatic increase in gun violence in the city of Toronto. Almost 100%. And that's talking about homicide incidents. We're not even talking about shootings because in many neighborhoods there are shootings now. And people don't even report them because it's so normalized. And the three levels of government have not done anything, said anything about addressing this problem. Initially, there used to be one and two small guns in the community that kids used to share amongst themselves. In fact, they used to rent it amongst themselves. There was a price. If you needed it for 30 minutes, 60 minutes or what, you could come and rent it. Right now, all the kids have their own guns. One and two. But it's not their own guns. It's not the small guns anymore. It's the big guns. The caliber has increased. Right? Something is wrong. Something was broken. And we're not and doing we're not anything, doing about, anything it. about it. So we so have to we sit have down to sit here and, and listen to these grieving mothers, mothers, these mothers that are brave, bold, courageous, 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 to come and share a story, story, for somebody to listen to what's to going on in our great, great city. city. There was a there was report a just a week, a week ago that says Toronto, Toronto 
is number four rated city as a livable city in the world. There was no American cities on the list. But we were number four. It's an incredible city. It's a resourceful city. It is a rich city. We've done many things right, but we've done some things wrong. When the, when children, the children come up to me and say it's easier for them to get a gun, gun than a job, that's an, that's an indictment, indictment against we as a city. city. It's, it's easier, easier to get a gun, get a gun than a job. job. Does that make, Does any, that make sense? any sense? Something's, Something's wrong. wrong. Something's, Something's broken, broken and it needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. Not tomorrow. It needs to be fixed now. It's crazy out there. We work across the city. We have a solid group of volunteers. And some of them are standing behind me, but there's many more. Right? Right? There's my friend here, Chuck. There's Dom. There's Danny. Right? There's Angela. Right? We're trying to make a difference. But in trying to make a difference, we have to engage. We have to engage the mothers that have lost, the families that have lost. But we also work with those people that are responsible. Trying to give them an opportunity to change their life. But between me and you, a lot of these kids, there's no way out. If you get a criminal record in the city of Toronto and Canada, you cannot be hired by the top 15 employers in the city. They will not hire anybody with a criminal record. The top 15 employers, including the provincial government, city hall, and the federal government. These kids don't have a way out. We talk about California, three strikes and you're out, and we think that we're doing better. In Canada, it's one strike and you're out. These kids make mistakes. Look, between men, you... They're not angels. A lot of them are not angels. But they're not angels. We cannot just we cannot throw them away, them away like that. Because, because we call them the shadows. Yeah, they live in the shadows. They, they sleep and they work in the shadows. Because they can't function outside. Because we don't make it easy. There's a young lady here. She keeps reminding me. She says, Lou, when you speak, remember to use the word love. She doesn't want to speak today, but she's lost her two sons to gun violence. Her name is Her name Patricia. Patricia. She's been working with us from day one, but she's been in the community for the longest time. She says, Lou, I don't want to speak today. But I'm going to recognize her. You can speak to her there. She keeps saying, Lou, remember to talk about love. Right? So I'm going to talk about love for her. We need to love our young kids. We're not talking about taking our streets back, we're talking about taking our children back. I don't want to worry about taking streets back anymore. We want to take our children back. Because there's a society out there that is tempting, that is criminal in many ways, and if we leave it up to that, we're going to have a lot more innocent shootings and so on. It has to stop. Where is it going to stop? Is it? Thanks, Patricia. Thanks, Patricia. Uh, I'm supposed to say, hurt people hurt people, okay? Did I, is that okay now? There's not one politician here today. Why? There's not one politician here. How many mothers that have lost are here? The courage, the strength. I'm actually meeting with them. Like I go home and I say, how can they do this? There's one young lady, she said, Louie, I have to do this. I don't have a choice. And her son was only shot three weeks ago. And she's here, but there's no politicians here. Something is wrong. Who's going to change it? Who's going to be the driver here? And who's going to be the passenger? The politicians have chosen to be passengers. We have chosen to be drivers. We will make a difference. And we're going to start today. This is just our first leg of this trip. The next trip will be leaving from here and going to Ottawa. And we're going to talk about the gun supply. We're going to talk about the jobs. We're going to talk about the criminal records. We're going to talk about the support. And we're going to talk about a permanent memorial for those who have lost. Right, Kelly? We're going to talk about those five pieces. And we're going to hold them accountable. But little do they know, we have one more card to play. There's a municipal election next year. And there's a provincial election next year. They better start listening. Because we're going to hold them accountable. We're going to hold them accountable at election time. In fact, we're not even going to wait until then. Our work is starting today. We cannot do it without your support. There's petitions online. There's petitions being circulated. 
There's a million, well not a million, there's a lot of volunteers here today that helped make this work. I'd like to congratulate them and thank them from the bottom of my heart, right? Because they believe in this cause and they're going to be here. Uh, we even got a stance office now at Union Hall, at Wellesley where we can meet. Uh, Tina doesn't know that, right? We thank each and every one of you. We thank Nate, we thank all the people that came up here, Angela. Like it's not like it's easy, easy to do this, but somebody, somebody has, to, has do to do it. And if, and we, if have we have to do it, we will do it. Stay tuned for round two. two. It, will it will happen. Thank you thank very you much. much. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. We will make a change. Hey, yeah. 